First this morning, we are talking about perennials. They are great additions to your garden that can continue to add beauty year after year. The Tribs Home and Garden Editor Doug Oster is here with some wonderful additions that you can add to your home starting right now. So these are all perennials, correct? Right, which means they come back year after year on their yes. own. Yes. Is it a lot of maintenance required? No maintenance. That's, None? Yeah, I don't. My kind of plants. I don't want any plants <laughs> with maintenance because the irony of what I do is I'm too busy talking and writing and yes. being on TV about gardening to garden. Okay. So uh, <laughs> I wanted to start off with my with my favorite. Please. So, so with perennials, the good thing is they come back year after year. Maybe the negative is they don't bloom all season like an annual would, like an impatient or a marigold. I see. But this one down here. That's it, your favorite. It only has a, a Latin name. What is it? It's called Corridulus lutea. Corridulus lutea. And uh, it blooms starting in April and it goes all the way through November. So okay, it has this so what's real a long, bloom? long bloomer. The deer don't like it. It makes a nice colony after a couple of years, and it's not invasive. It just throws seeds. Yes. And so this is the ultimate low maintenance plant. And, and for me, after chasing three deer out of the garden this morning, oh boy, <laughs> they don't eat it. So it is just a great plant. Uh, when I was at Han Nursery to get these, there was only one of these left. So when you, when I'm off, I'm taking it back to Han. So there'll be a long line of people going to get. <laughs> now to get I the see curlis. the yellow bloom there. Does it come in other? What do you call them? Varieties? Well, what yeah, other cultivars. Okay. It comes in. In there's a white one, but this yellow one. It's the toughest. It's the toughest of them all. And, okay. And Meaning sturdy. It comes back. It, it comes back can. and you don't have to worry about it. Never have to water it. It just does its thing. Oh, It'll wow. grow in dry shade. It'll grow in full sun. Uh, this is a wonderful pollinator plant. Okay. Um, it's from the milkweed family. So people are growing milkweed to help monarch butterflies. That's the only host plant for a monarch. I did not know that. Yeah, so this one's called butterfly weed. Again, with well, a name like butterfly weed, yes, you know, not the best name, but you know that it's going <laughs> to come back year after year, and uh, again, you'll be helping the pollinators. Okay. Uh, one I really like here, here, just that's really pretty. What is that? This is a lavender. Just squeeze. I those thought that was lavender. I wasn't just sure. That. Oh, oh it smells yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no so maintenance great. with the lavender either. Yeah, yeah. It needs full sun, lots of drainage. As long okay. as you give it that, it's going to be good. Uh, and then this, I, I just love this. This is okay. a type of cone flower. It's a prairie plant, so again, it's almost a weed. Okay. And so this That's is pretty. yeah, this variety. Well, this is a, a what we call double. That's the style of flower is double. And scientific name I say poofy, but yes, uh, <laughs> very cool. And another one for the sun down here is, is an ice plant. If you've yes. got a place that has full sun beating down on it, and you, you don't want to have to worry about your plant, this ice plant. It, it, you know, you can see it looks kind of like a succulent. An ice plant that needs full sun. Yeah, isn't that okay. is ir ironic. Just making sure. Coreopsis here, another great pollinator plant, another indestructible plant. Okay. And then I brought shade lovers too. Okay, so uh, from sun to shade. Right, so this is a, a grass called Hakona Kloa. Yes. So most grasses need sun, but this one is a Japanese style grass. It's a shade lover. Is there ever any bloom? Uh, nope, this? it's just grown for, oh, okay. for the kind Beautiful. of green and red foliage. Uh, next to that, most people know this is coral bells. Yes. Uh, this is hookera. This is another thing the deer won't eat. Sometimes they'll nibble off the flowers. Okay. But they will not eat the foliage. Oh, this is part of that. I didn't realize that this yep, is part yep, of that. Pretty, okay. And, and they come in a million different colors. Oh, you know, pretty. The, yes. The flowers and the foliage. Uh, it could be uh, a chartreuse. It could be deep green. It could okay. be bronze. It could be black. This is called Aurelia. Again, yes. you know, this is really going to brighten up a shady corner. I see. I brought this one as a way to show you how you could save money Whoa. on your perennials. <laughs> so you see, most of these are, are sold in one gallon containers. Right. They're more expensive. When you go hunting around the nursery, okay. go into the back and look for them in these little quartz. And right now, this time of the year, if that quartz been sitting there since May, they're, they're going to put it on sale for you. When okay. you go to a good nursery, you know it's been watered, and so you can use it. Uh, so that you know that it, it's uh, it's going to be a great plant for you. I That's see. the one thing about planting perennials now. The end of summer is a good time to plant them, but if it gets real hot, you're going to need to water. I see. And so just keep these things watered, keep them established. One more shade lever, and this is what yes. the deer were eating this morning. This? Nope, right here. Okay. This uh, hosta. Oh, uh, nice. These, they like it. Uh, this is deer candy <laughs> right here. This is deer, deer candy. candy. I like it. Okay. And uh, uh, I saw these at the nursery. You buy three of them, they're only six bucks a piece. Nice. You know, and you put three of those in, you've got something that's going to be there 
longer than the gardener. Okay. Uh, until the deer come. <laughs> until the deer come and eat it. But the thing is, with with mine, the deer ate it, ate it to the ground. But these things are so tough, it'll it'll come back. It'll come back. I'd have to get out there and spray, though. I have to get out there and put some spray on there gotcha. to keep the deer off there. What is this beauty? So. Uh, this is an old-fashioned flower called Phlox, the pink one. Okay. Again, indestructible. The newer varieties, though, like the old ones, they get this thing called powdery mildew, which just means, Whoa. yeah, it doesn't <laughs> kill it, but the, the foliage gets this, like, gray stuff on mm. it. The new varieties are resistant to it. And Phlox is, is a fragrant plant, indestructible plant, and a pretty plant. And then next to it is a Shasta daisy there. Okay. When do you, I don't say Shasta daisy, beautiful daisy. When do you cut them? Because you want them to come back. Do you have to trim them? Yeah. Now, some perennials, they're only going to give you that one flush of blooms. But others, like Phlox, yes. once they start to form their seeds like that, snip them off, and hopefully you can see there's a bud right there. Yes. They'll flower again for you. So once you see the bloom, then you cut it. Once, once you see the bloom this, starts to degrade and kind of yeah. look ratty, okay. that's time to cut the flowers off. On Not most, any particular time of year. No, because everyone is going to bloom a little bit differently. Okay. You know, some perennials are going to be early spring, some midsummer, and some in the fall. Okay. Wonderful. Doug, thank you so thank much. You. you always learn something when you are here. You can see Doug this Saturday at Plumline Nursery. That's in Murraysville. He's going to be there for their annual customer appreciation day. He's going to be there from 11 o'clock that, that morning talking about summer planting and growing. Now, for more details, you can visit Doug's blog. We, have, of course, have a link posted for you at kdka.com slash ptl.